Hello, my name is Kishwani. S K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here. GMAT review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We have solved every single math problem from this book. If you're interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now we are, we are in the process of redoing the problems and we are on page number 286. Please turn to it. Page number 286, the very last problem that we see on the page, number 130. Number 100. And 30. Let's see what it has to say. It is just simply asking us for a volume of a rectangular solid. 130. The question simply is what's the volume of a rectangular solid? That's all. Let's see what they tell us. In the first statement, they tell us that the that the two adjacent faces, two adjacent faces, have areas of fifteen and twenty-four. Well, let's see. Let's see if that information is enough. Simply knowing that the two adjacent faces have the areas of fifteen and twenty-four. If that is enough for us to be able to figure out what the volume of this rectangular solid would be. Let's look at a couple of scenarios, shall we? For example, for example, we may think of something very simple, very, very straightforward, like when, we, when I say 15, I'm thinking of 3 by 5. So let's do 3 by 5 here. So here is a 3 by 5. And then I see 28. And if you want the area, area of 28, if this is 3 by 5, let's make this 3 by 8. Because of course 3 has to be common. So this side has to be common. If, you, if I'm going to put, um, if I'm going to call this 8, then this has to be 3, and this would have to be 3, and this would have to be 5. So here we have it. We have a situation where the area of the uh, area of this phase, the front phase, is 3 by 5. 3 by 5, which is the area is 15. The area of this phase is 3 by 8, which is 24. So we have two adjacent faces, two adjacent faces with the area of 15 and 24. Let's find out what the volume of this thing is. Volume of this guy, of course, is going to be 3 times 5 times 8. But that's one possibility. This is a very civilized, very straightforward, very normal looking rectangular solid. Now we have to think of a weird scenario. And to keep your work simple, to make your work as simple and straightforward and economical, always think of 1. 1 is a very weird number. Let's plug in 1 here. Let's make one of the sides equal to 1. So here's another one. What if our, what if the, our solid that we're talking about is goes outside here? Let me redraw it. I don't like it. Let me redraw it very quickly. Looks something like this. This is 1, this is 1, we want 15 to be the thing, maybe this is 15 then, so this is 1 by 15, and since this is 1, then maybe this is 24. If this side is 24, then this side is 1 by 24, and the area of this area of this face is 24, the area of this face is 15, again we have two, face, two adjacent faces with the area of 15 and 24. But what's the volume of this guy? The volume of this guy is going to be 1 by 15 by 24 as you can see these two volumes are not the same here we have here we have 15 times 8 and here we have 15 times 24 here we have 15 times 8 versus 15 times 24 as you can clearly see the volume of this guy is actually three times the volume of that guy 
We cannot tell what the volume of the rectangular solid is simply by knowing that the two adjacent sides have the fa have two adjacent faces of the area of 15 and 24. This is not enough. This is nowhere nowhere near enough. It could be any area. There are infinite possibilities. There are infinite possibilities. We could have made this thing this side equal to half. We could have made this side anything. We could have made it two, three. There are infinite possibilities. Simply knowing the area of two adjacent sides. Uh, simply knowing the area of the two adjacent faces rather, they, they are not called sides, they are called faces. There are six faces, rectangular solid has six faces, one in the front, one in the back, one on the top, one on the bottom, one on the left and one on the right. There are six faces. Simply knowing that the two adjacent faces have the areas of 15 and 24 is, does, not enable us, does not enable us to ascertain the volume of the thing. The first statement by itself is not enough. The first statement by itself is not enough. A, D, B C E A D B C E. Now that we've established that the first statement by itself is not enough, we know now answer cannot be A or D. It would have to be either B, C, or E. Let's look at second statement. And in order for us to look at the second statement, we have to erase everything. Here is your second statement. Second statement, let's see what it tells us. The second statement tells us that two opposite faces, two opposite faces have, have areas of 40. Is that enough? Is that enough? What is, what is it that they have told us? Here is our rectangular solid. One more time. Here is our rectangular solid. Let's call this x, y and z. So the two opposite faces have the area of 40. So if you're looking at this front face here, x times y, and then there is a, there is a, there is a face in the back, which is also x times y, and those are the two opposite faces. Or if you're looking at top, the top and the bottom, or the left and the right. Two opposite faces have the area of 40. What they have told us here is that, what they have told us here is that x times y equals 40. But of course we know that the volume is equal to x times y times z. We know x times y is 40, so it's 40 times z, but what is Z? We don't know the third side. Simply knowing that the two opposite faces have the area of 40 does not enable us to figure out the volume of the rectangular solid. We need to know the third dimension. It's okay if they give us the product instead of giving us the, the two dimensions separately. It's okay if they give us the product of the two dimensions, but we still need to know the third dimensions. Now if you know that Z is equal to 10, then the volume of this thing is 40 times 10. If we know that z is equal to half, then the volume of this thing is 40 times half. But we need to know the value of the third dimension, the z. They don't give it to us. The second statement by itself is also not enough. Therefore, we know answer cannot be b. Let's put the two statements together and see what happens. See if it, see if it gets anywhere. So here's our second statement. We know x times y is 40. And here's our first statement. Our first statement, we are told, Our first statement we were told, they have an area of 40. Our first statement we were told that the two opposite faces, two, or rather two adjacent faces, two adjacent faces has the area of 15 and, and 24. Well, that does the job, I think. That does the job very, very nicely because now what we're dealing with now what we're dealing with is something more definitive. We know that two adjacent sides have to be 15 by 40, and therefore the first scenario that we looked at, first scenario that we looked at, I'm going to show you one more time. If we had plotted here 1 by 15, 1 by 15 by 24, this side, this would have an area of 15, this would have an area of 24, so the two adjacent faces have the area of 24, but two opposite faces have the area of 40. What's going to be the area of this top guy? The area of the top face here, because this is 24, this is also 24, and this is 15. This side is 15. The area of the top has to be 40. This is not going to work out. This is not what we're dealing with. What we're dealing with is something like this. What we're dealing with is the other situation that we talked about. What we're dealing with is the other situation that we talked about, which is 3 by 5, so this is 3 by 5, this is 15, this is 3 by 8, 3 by 8 is 24, 3 by 8 is 24, and this side is 8. 
and therefore this side right here, this side, which is the same as this side right here, this side is same as this side right here, which is 5, and now this top face has the area of 40, the bottom face has the area of 40, top face and the bottom face have the area of 40, and hence we meet the condition, two opposite faces of the area of 40, two adjacent faces of the area of 15 and 24, now we can figure out the volume. Volume is going to be, volume of this thing is going to be 3 by 5 by 8. Well, this is the volume. Now, if you don't like doing it like this, if you don't like what I just did, we could actually do it algebraically. If you happen to be Puritan, and you feel that what I just did here was too childish, and if you insist, if you're hell-bent on doing it the proper way, the algebraic way, the academic way, the classical way, the traditional way, the orthodox way, we could do it. Let's do it then. Since you asked for it, we're going to do it. The algebraic way would be, I'm going to do it here, so that we don't have to erase anything. Here's how we do the algebraic way. We know the one phase, area of one phase we know is 15. We also know that the area of other phase is 24. Let's call it y times z is 24. We also know that the area of third phase is 40. This is x times y. Let me do it in a little bit proper. This is x times y, which we know of 15. Then we have y times z, which we know is 24. And the third one is going to be x times z, which we know is 40. Okay, are you with me so far? Very good. It's important that you stay in the story. What do you suppose we're going to get if we're going to multiply these three quantities? If you multiply these three quantities, we get x times x, which is x squared. We get y times y, which is y squared. And we get z times z, we get z squared. And that is going to be equal to 15 times 24 times 40. Now we take the square root of both sides. We're almost done. Let's take the square root of both sides and you get x times y times z is going to be the square root of 15 times 24 times 40. We're almost done. 15 can be written as 3 times 5. 24 can be written as 3 times 8. 40 can be written as 8 times 5. And what do you suppose the square root of this thing is? Square root of that quantity is going to be we see a 3 here, we see a 3 here, so that 3 comes out as 1, 3. We see a 5 here, and we see a 5 here, that comes out as 1, 5. And then we see an 8 here, and an 8 here, that comes out as 1, 8. And here you go, x times y times z equals 3, times, 3 by 5 by 8, just like before. So what you see on the right hand side is the more of a classical approach, traditional approach, the orthodox approach, as I said, the academic approach, the algebraic approach. And this was a bit of a non-traditional non approach. Either one would do the job. Either one, whatever, whichever one clicks in your mind, go with it. Do you understand? I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.